Hello dear learners, welcome once again to another MOOCs lecture of BP 103T. We are dealing with unit 5 introduction to semi solid dosage form. I am Anjali Mishra, assistant professor at Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology, Pharmacy Institute, Greater Noida. So, let us start with semi solid dosage form. As we had already discussed in the previous lecture, what is semi solid dosage form, what are the different classification of semi solid dosage form, we have studied different types of semi solid dosage form be it your ointments, creams, gel, paste, suppositories, then creams, poultices, cataplasm, and many more. We had understood the different method of preparation of each of them. In this slides, we are going to understand the method of preparation of paste and gels. So, uh, right now we are focusing on a semi solid dosage form known as paste. So, whenever we hear this word paste, the primary thing that strike us is a quite viscous preparation, a very thick preparation as compared to ointment or creams. So, in the previous lecture also I had said that pastes have a higher consistency as compared to ointment or creams. So, it is also a semi solid dosage form which is meant on to application of skin or on to the mucous membrane. It has the major difference between ointment is paste and paste is that the consistency of ointment is less as compared to the consistency of paste. So, paste is highly viscous as compared to ointment. So, this is the major difference between ointment and between paste. Now, due to the presence of fine powders, paste are quite thick, stiff and greasy. Now, what makes paste actually thick and greasy? Because of the presence of highly coarser particle as compared to ointments. So, it is uh, important for us to understand that the presence of particle in ointment is quite thin or quite uh, fine as compared to the presence of particle in your paste and creeps. So, this the presence of uh, coarser particle makes paste actually thick, uh, stiff and greasy. Now, less aesthetic appearance and it is oftenly unappealing. Usually, this is a uh, very much understood phenomena that paste due to the presence of a uh, quite coarser particle, it is making it look less appealing, let, less, less acceptance by a patient because the color or the appealing or the external appearance of the paste are oftenly not acceptable by many of the patient because of the presence of coarser and because of the very thick consistency of the paste. However, due to Gracie nature, it has a tendency to strongly adhere to the area on where it is applied. Even though the, appear, the appearance of the paste is not too great, however, when it is applied onto a particular area, uh, for example, on a skin or onto a mucous membrane, the adhesion of the paste is quietly large or for a longer period of time. Now, adhesion is because of the strong viscosity or for because of the high viscosity. Let us understand paste in a more detailed way. Now, as you all can see, the paste is quite thick as it is represented here as compared to ointments, as compared to lotions. Hence, because of the high tendency of or high viscosity, they have a tendency to not melt easily because they contain coarser particle. As a result, they do not melt easily. Now, because of that, they form a coarse or protective layer at the site of application. For example, if I have applied a paste on my hand, on the back of my hand, it is going to adhere to that particular surface for a longer period of time in comparison to application of ointment or to lotion or to creams. Hence, the application time is more and the adherence time is more as a result, the action is also prolonged and it is more. Mainly it is applied with a spatula. Sometimes yes, a spatula is also uh, supplied with the paste in order to apply. For this purpose, uh, it is often done to avoid the contamination or to avoid the cross contamination between the applicant's finger and to the surface onto which it is applied. So, spatulas are also uh, provided with the paste or it or entire packaging of the paste. Sometimes application can also be done with the aid of lint or any other dressing materials. Now, apart from spatula or apart from the um, hand fingers, uh, sometimes what happens there is a use of 
lint, lint, it could be cotton balls, it could be woolen balls or it could be any sort of applicants or it can be any cotton material as well. So, application uh, is usually little um, hazy or it is, it is usually little uh, problematic as compared to applying co uh, creams or ointments because there we can directly apply these semi solid dosage form with the help of hands or with the help of fingers. However, here uh, just for the sake or just to avoid the contamination, spatula is being provided, lint materials are being provided, sometimes dressing materials are also being provided along with the paste. So, let us understand what are the different types of paste? The very first types of paste is a fatty paste. As the name implies, fatty paste means it is a paste which consists of API or major portion of the paste that is fatty in nature or that is lipophilic in nature. Another type of paste is an aqueous gel paste. Aqueous gel paste is a sort of paste which consists of aqueous matter or aqueous substance in a larger amount as the name implies it is an aqueous paste. So, the content of water loving thing or it is a hydrophilic sort of paste. So, next type of paste is a hydrocolloid paste. Hydrocolloid paste is a sort of paste in which there is a presence of hydrocolloidal substances which are in the range of colloidal particle. So, if the particle uh, ranges in the form of colloidal solution, then the formation of paste or the types of paste that comes out is known as hydrocolloid paste. Apart from these paste, the last type of paste that is present is known as a medicated paste. Now, the type of paste could be any, if we add the choice of API into the paste, then that is going to make our paste medicated paste. If we are going to add an antifungal API into it, then that is going to make our paste an antifungal medicated paste. So, depending upon the choice of medication, that is going to make our type of paste a medicated one. So, this was all about the different types of paste. Now, let us understand that whenever we are supposed to make paste, what are the different types of substances or different types of ingredients or excipients that we are supposed to uh, make or that we are supposed to carry while formulating a paste. Now, very first thing that we require while formulating a paste is a liquid base. Now, why am I saying we require a liquid base? Because majorly while formulating paste, the substances are quite high in particle sizes, the substances or the solid medicaments are often in a coarser particle range. As a result, in order to form a semi-solid preparation, we definitely need a liquid substances and for that purpose, the very first thing that we require is a liquid base. Apart from the liquid base, the next thing that we require is a fillers and abrasives. Sometimes what happens, fillers are also used in order to fill all the gaps or the uh, voids that are present in the base. Abrasives are used in order to impart grittiness to the paste because sometimes, for example, toothpaste. Toothpaste is a type of preparation that requires the presence of abrasiveness into it for the purpose of cleansing. So, sometimes even abrasiveness is to be incorporated externally. So, for that purpose, fillers and abrasive substances are incorporated into the paste. Next thing that we require for the formulation of paste is rheology modifiers. Now, rheology modifiers means what? It means any substances that alters the flow property of our paste. For example, if we want our paste to be less viscous because initially it has, it is quite viscous and it is really difficult for a consumer to actually take, take or use that paste. For that purpose, we want or it is desirable for us to make our paste less viscous. So, we definitely use rheology modifiers. It may differ. If we, if we want a less viscous paste, we definitely use liquid rheology modifiers and if we require a high viscous space, we are going to remove or we are going to add certain things that is going to increase the viscosity of our formulation. Next thing that we require for the formulation of paste is detergent. Now, detergent are basically used in order to decrease the surface tension between the applicant surface and the product. Because if the surface tension decreases, the facilitation or the penetration of the product actually occurs to a larger extent. Hence, detergents are applied in order to decrease the surface tension between our product for easy facilitation or transportation of our product. Next thing 
definitely our API is something that we require if we are supposed to formulate a medicated sort of paste. Next thing that is with, uh, that we require is a API, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Then if the face paste is something that has to be consumed internally or it is something that has to be used in the oral cavity for that purpose we are supposed to use a flavor to it because flavor actually enhances the acceptability of our product. If for example, if we are adding mint flavor to it, if we are adding um, sweet flavor to it, it is going to accept the uh, accept, it is going to enhance the acceptability of our product. Next thing sweetener. Because as I have said, if it is a substance that is to be used in the oral cavity or, or into the buccal cavity, it is important for us to impart sweetness to it because if anything uh, or if the API has got a bland taste or if the API has got a bitter taste, it is important for us to impart sweetness because if the API has got an unmaskable, unpredictable taste, nobody is going to accept that paste. As a result, sweetening agent has to be incorporated into it. Next thing that we require is a coloring agent. Coloring agent actually uh, improves the aesthetic appeal of our product. If a good color, for example, if an aqua color is being added or if, of, or if any color of our choice is being added to a product, is, it is going to increase the aesthetic value of our product and it is going to impart beauty to our product. So for any pharmaceutical preparation, if it looks good, it definitely sells good. So for that purpose, we require the using of coloring agent. And eventually the last thing that we require while formulating paste is nothing but a preservative. Preservative is going to uh, enhance the shelf life of our product and it actually prevents the microbial attack into our products. So it is important to understand that whenever we are formulating paste, the various things that we require is a liquid base, a detergent, an abrasives, fillers, preservatives, sweetening agent, flavoring agent, buffers and eventually API if we are supposed to formulate a medicated paste. Now let us understand when we are formulating paste what, what are the different methods through which we can formulate paste. If I talk about paste there are majorly two methods. The first method is the trituration method and the another method is the fusion method. As we have al already discussed previously while discussing preparation of ointment, while discussing preparation of creams, the different methods of preparation of these substances. In the same manner, two important methods of preparation of paste are discussed here. Let us understand uh, the preparation of these creams first. Let us uh, once again I would like to elaborate on these preparation method. The very first time I would like to elaborate on trituration method. Now trituration method is a simple method in which is which help us actually to understand to in uh, to understand the geometric dilution or the mixing of these formulations. So for that purpose we are using trituration method and for fusion method what we do is first of all we melt the base then we add the suitable API into it and what we do eventually is we congeal the bases quickly so that improper or anti uh, or no microbial contamination or growth may occur. So this is all about the different methods of preparation of paste. Now let us understand the packaging of paste. Generally if the paste is used for, uh, generally if the paste has a limited use, it is often supplied in a uh, metal jars as I have mentioned here. However, for example, if the paste requires quick uses, everyday uses, so just for the um, easy facilitation and for easy usage of these formulation, it is supplied in a collapsible tube. For example, your toothpaste because every day or twice or thrice we are using these things. So for easy uh, acceptance, for easy uh, use of that, for lucid use of that, these product, it is made or formulated or packed in a uh, collapsible tubes. Then uh, these can be, the tubes can be of plastic also, it can be of metal as, metal as well. However, metal tubes are avoided in order to prevent the leaching of our product. Next, some important labeling must be included when you pack a, um, creams or paste or any of the solid dosage form. Here specifically when I talk about paste, the labeling must include a replace cap tightly after each use. The, the, um, it is self-explanatory. Why are we supposed to replace the cap tightly? Because 
if we do not replace the cap tightly there are chances that microbial growth or contamination or oxidation of a product might develop or might increase which may which may actually hamper the uh, shelf life of our product next instruction is that it should be kept away from direct sunlight because photolysis of various ingredients that are present in our paste might occur hence it should be kept away from direct sunlight and eventually this is an important thing that has to be written while preparing or while packaging paste is we are not supposed to swallow paste because it is not made for it is not made to go into the gi tract hence it can be used into the oral cavity however it must not be swallowed so this is all about your paste moving on to gels and jellies now whenever we hear this word gels the very first thing that comes in our mind is a something that is ha that has an aqua color or something which is very much thin very much watery sort of substances so that is actually true because gels are aqueous colloidal system they have majorly the major portion is the presence of aqueous colloidal system in them which actually makes hydrated substances that consist of insoluble medicaments if the medicaments are actually not soluble in aqueous system so gels majorly are aqueous system which consist of or which has incorporated insoluble medicaments in it now moving on to jellies jellies are similar to your gels they are also transparent or translucent then first of all very very important this non greasy now what makes any semi solid preparation non greasy actually if the presence of fat or the lipophilic uh, character is more in a particular formulation it is going to make our substances more greasy but in gels and jellies the presence of aqueous substances is quite high as a result it becomes non greasy then they are semi solid to thick viscous fluids definitely it is a semi solid preparation as a result it is a semi solid preparation and it is less viscous as compared to paste as compared to ointments then next it is majorly consist of sub microscopic particles sub microscopic particles are present because of the particles has uh, the if the, if the particle uh, actually is of higher range or if the particle is a coarser particle range then it is going to produce um, unacceptability by the patient because that may lead to grittiness of your gels and it is important to understand that gels are very smooth as compared to any of the semi solid medicaments or any of the semi solid dosage forms then they are majorly transparent or translucent it is important to understand gels are majorly transparent or translucent because they have a high range of presence of watery um, part in it or they are majorly they are aqueous in nature as you all can see the picture that i have presented here it is a simple picture describing a gel a simple gel that is that has actually aqueous hydrocolloidal substance incorporated into it now these are some of the types of gels that are majorly uh, present in our market these gels are organo gels hydro gels and zero gels now let us understand these gels in a deeper way organo gels are substances which actually use presence of solid materials entrapped in three dimensional network so basically in hydrogel sorry in organo gels we have incorporation of solid medicaments in a framework which is actually a three dimensional network of organo gels so if there is a presence of solid medicaments in a three dimensional network of a base we can say that the formed gel is a sort of or is an example of organo gels another type of gel is a hydrogel now here in hydrogel this is a network of polymer in which hydrophilic or colloidal gel is incorporated majorly in a water dispersed medium so in hydrogels majorly the major part or the actual base is the hydrophilic base because the name implies it is a hydrogels so whatever the api whatever the medicament is present in that we are incorporating that medicament into a huge proportion or into a huge quantity of uh, medicament that is present in water soluble bases so such kind of gels are known as hydrogels and eventually the third type of gel is a zero gels 
Now, zero gels have come from a term known as zero fights. Zero fights are actually um, absorbs and all the water that is present in the um, in the gel and thus making it uh, actually look like a zero fight. Hence, this name has come from that zero gels. So basically, it is it is a type of gel in which vehicle actually removes the vehicle actually removes the presence of water and leaves a three dimensional network or it just leaves a network behind it. So, these are some of the types or the example of gels. The very first example that we have seen is it is organogels. Another th example we saw is hydrogels and eventually the third type is the zero gels which actually removes the vehicle and thus leaves a simple framework of gel into the uh, formulation. So, this is all about the types of gel. Now, moving ahead when we are supposed to manufacture gels, what are the substances, what are the excipient that we are supposed to carry? The very first thing that we require is a vehicle because if you want to incorporate or if you want to fabricate a do dosage form, the very first and important thing is the presence of a vehicle. Without vehicle, there is nothing or there is actually it is an impossible thing to incorporate or to transport presence of API into a particular patient body. So, vehicle is the primary thing that you require in order to incorporate vehicle or in, in order to incorporate API into a particular consumer's body or patient's body. Next is buffer. Buffer is there to prevent the change in pH and thus to make our product remain the pH into which it was made. For example, during manufacturing process, if the pH of our product is slightly acidic, so we also, it is desirable for us to maintain the pH of our product till slightly acidic until it is 3 or 2, 4 years shelf life or whatever the shelf life may be. So, buffer, suitable buffers are added in order to maintain the pH of our formulation. Next substances that we require is antioxidants. Antioxidants are um, made to uh, incorporated in a gel in order to prevent the oxidation of our product. Next thing that we require is a preservative. Preservatives are present as a result because we are going to um, make our gel which will which we require to last for 2 to 3 years. For that purpose we, it is important for us to add preservative into it. Then API is added because we, if we want the gels to be a medicated gel, we are supposed to add the suitable API into it. Gelling agent is an important thing because without gelling agent, our gel is not being, the gel will not be called as a gel. So, gelling agent must be there. Then if the gel has to be consumed or has to be applied on mucous membrane in present in our mouth or into the buccal cavity, gelling flavoring agent has to be added in order to enhance the acceptability of our product. Then eventually coloring agent must be added in order to accept the or in order to enhance the acceptability of our product and thus uh, ensure that a product reaches more and more customer and thus it is liked and it is popular and it is made popular through its color, through its flavor because these techniques are important in order to strategize these markets and in, and in order to uh, make our product popular among consumers. Then method of preparation of gels we have a cold method, we have a dispersion method, we have a fusion method. Then it is the same as that we discussed in the previous slide that cold method is that we are actually mixing all the preparation at a particular temperature which does not exceeds a particular value because everything is being done under cold conditions only. So, simple trituration and mixing occurs but under cold condition. Next method is a dispersion method. Dispersion method is similar to that of incorporation method. We incorporate the solid medicament into a suitable base and thus we disperse. But during dispersion method, is, it is important for us to understand that uh, geometric dispersion must be done in order to avoid inaccuracy. Then last is your fusion method. Fusion method is very simple and explanatory. Initially, what we do is the base of our choice is being melted and after melting, we add API if any and all sort of excipients and um, buffers, flavoring agent, then what we do is we rapidly congeal these substances in order to avoid the um, prevention of any sort of microbial attack. So, these are some of the method of preparation of gels. Then gels are packed in a collapsible tubes, it can be packed in a um, wide mouth container jars, the tubes can be of uh, metal origin, the tubes can be of plastic origin. Then there are certain important instructions that has to be written on the important packaging of the uh, gels. First, 
replace cap tightly after each use in order to avoid the um, um, contamination of our product then we have to keep it away from direct sunlight in order to avoid photolysis of our product then we are not supposed to apply these product on broken or uh, irritated skin because that may seriously aggravate the condition and thus uh, may cause more harm in new, near future. Then last thing this is a very important instruction that has to be written on each and every semi solid dosage form and that instruction is for external use only. Then we are going to understand what are the excipients that are used in semi solid dosage form. Excipient is something which actually helps in order to formulate our product. So, it is a helping hand, it is a pharmaceutical aid to manufacture our semi solid dosage form. So, these excipients included bases without base our product is actually cannot be incorporated. Next thing is permeation enhancer, permeation enhancer actually helps our product to get incorporated into the area onto which it is applied. Next we have humectants or emollients or softeners or moisturizers. Next thing we have antioxidants, antioxidants are actually present in order to prevent our product from getting oxidized. Gelling agent are present if the method of uh, semi solid dosage form if the choice of the semi solid dosage form is a gel. Then we have buffers which actually resist the change in pH. Next thing that we have is a preservative, preservative actually helps to maintain the shelf life or product to a huge uh, uh, years or to a larger years. Next we have emulsifiers, emulsifiers are present because if we are formulating any sort of cream or oil uh, emul emulsion then for that purpose in order to maintain the stability of that formulation we add suitable emulsifier. So that is all about the preparation of gels, jellies and paste. I hope this lecture was very informative for all of you. So thank you so much.